Big thanks to HyperX, who's also one of the main sponsors of this tournament, along with Tempo Storm. Make sure you check out TempoStorm.com over the next coming days for your destination of strategy content to become legendary. Uh, we're getting ready for our next game, so let's just jump straight into it. Masson versus Trump. It's a battle to get in the money. Get the money, script. Hmm. Trump looks more in it than uh, Masson right now. Like Trump, Trump's got his business face on. He sees the monies. Look at Masson's that business. Also, <laughs> Masson's gotten a haircut and dyed his hair too. He's a whole new man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we will clarify though, because people are kind of curious that these games are pre recorded, but they've also been pretty recent. Like Hafu also recorded that game when she was in Korea. So a big thank you and a congratulations to Hafu for placing top four. Um, and she was traveling while playing games. But now we have uh, Masson versus Trump. What do we think of the opening hands here, Kurt? Um, Masson's is pretty good, but also Trump's is quite good. I mean, any hand with uh, a two drop, a ghoul, and a keeper is very, very strong. Yeah, he keeps all of it. No surprise there. I'm kind of curious. Uh, maybe you know. I know Trump has the prison Trump. Does Trump have a business Trump? Is, is there oh. a business Trump on, 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 his, on his stream? No, not on stream. But off stream, oh. there is business Trump. And let me tell you, he is ferocious. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. he cuts the deals. What does he cut it with? A chainsaw? A fan, obviously. Oh, uh, okay. Man, that's pretty lame. No, it's actually really funny though. It's one of it's some of the most animated you'll see Trump when he tries to like sell an idea to you and present something. It's actually really, really cool and amusing. Hmm. Trump's actually really funny and entertaining when he's in that mode. Okay. All right, so let's see what uh, Trump has here on turn two. He has the Frostwolf Gold Grunt, but that also just feeds directly into the Imani Berserker. So I guess he just hero powers and passes instead. Yep. That yeah, makes the he's most gonna, sense. He's going to coin the Ascension, or he's going to coin the um, Keeper. Mm-hmm. Or keeper he's going to the... Um, <laughs> I guess uh, neither play would be optimal against the board. But if for some reason Mage used the hero power to do 5 damage uh, with the Imani by enacting his Enrage, then you could use the Keeper there for people who are just kind of confused. I, I, I think here you rip the Frostwolf Grunt. Really? Yeah, because it would die to the Imani and then you'd kill the Imani uh, with the um, Keeper. The keeper. And mm -hmm. if he trades, then you still have the coin for the uh, Silver Hand Knight the turn after. But then, uh, oh, okay, okay. Because then my question would have been, why not play that on turn two then? Because he had the coin on turn three, but that makes the most sense then, to play it on turn three. And it's more consistent with his decisions. Masan has uh, the Kirin Tor Mage or the Emperor Cobra. And the Kieran Tord Mage plays into, well, I guess it plays more into Swipe. Actually, they're both playing the Swipe. It doesn't really matter. So I guess the Emperor Cobra is better timing because it can't immediately die without, a, obviously, taking like a hero power or something like that. I think here you Doggy and hero power. Down the Amani. Mm -hmm. Do you do you save the uh, the keeper of the grove or do you take the hit? Oh man, I think with this much of a card advantage, you uh, you, you trade the keeper. Yeah, you kill off the keeper. Oh, but instead, he's using the keeper to kill off the uh, the Emperor Cobra. All right, which will prove fruitful or prudent Actually, for future turns. I actually like that play a lot. I take that back. That was very nice. Now, don't you wish you had Spellbender right now? I, I guess. If he had Spellbender, but he, that would be replacing... Oh, the Murloc Tide. Yeah, I guess you're right. It would have been really nasty to have. And then you could protect your... What would it be? 6-2 Amani. That's true. 
And uh, Swipe would actually be absorbed by the Spellbender as well, so. as well as Wrath and pretty much any removal of the Druid would use right now. And the uh, Still, Mark of Nature. Oh, you're right, the Mark of Nature as well. Still, it's, uh, it's a pretty nice board there. Like, Masan can pretty much kill whatever comes out on while putting out his own minions. I don't see why he won't do that right now. Put out his own Silver Hand Knight. And what do you know? No spellbender necessary here, Crip. Oh, he's playing the value game. Yep. Okay. I think this you is good. The Worgen is the most threatening, and that leaves the uh, Amani still there. Oh, Trump got Power of the Wild. That actually changes a lot. Um, or does it? No, yeah, maybe not. What does it change? It doesn't change anything, my bad. Ah, it's all good. Um, I think, I, uh, you gotta charge into the Amani here. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's just repre it's just too big of a threat right now. And you, I think, um, what was good about Masan's past play is he realized that if Trump could have removed the Amani Berserker, he would have by now. And so there's no need to actually run it into the Silver Hand Knight directly at the moment. So he would have to top deck into something immediately. His alternative play is to use Ascension and trade and then try to, um, I suppose, to try and uh, fight back for the board. And that way yeah, you can save the record so from last year. It is risky because if Mage has like a fireball or something, you could be in big trouble. Yeah, I don't like this play at all. I mean, you make a big play and it eventually gets traded for. Look at this Murloc synergy crypt, though. Oh, oh. Like it's going to be a 4-3. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Not bad. Yeah. So you know what? And if it was a spellbender, he wouldn't have been able to return it back to his hand. You know what? I think the Murloc Tide Leader is actually okay here. Or War Leader, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not convinced. I'm just trying to make a case. <laughs> oh man, Trump is not happy with this. This no. is not a good business decision. Nope. Looks like he's going to fold soon. If unless he's able to stabilize, that is such a painful trade to use a six mana charge minion to trade for half of the well two thirds of the five five creature or five yeah. mana creature. That is painful. We have many well, he draws a mirror entity to combo with the Kieran Tor Mage, and then he can also use the Corelight Oracle to kind of ramp up the remaining cards he needs. Oh, I think he didn't realize his combo, or he doesn't care about it. Ah, uh, yeah. I guess he'd play the Cool Light Oracle first, and then the... The, the thing is, I, like. I, think, I think this play was better, because if Trump suspects you have Mirror Entity, you don't want to feed him more draws. Like a one or two drop. And that's the oh, best way. Oh, that's Trump with the next level plays! Nice. That mirror entity gave Masan that extra creature to use mind control tech and steals the second best creature away from his opponent. Now wow. imagine that was Spellbender. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh. But Masan's got the perfect answer. Still not going to play his Cold Light Oracle. You'd probably oh, play it. He drew a polymorph. He didn't need. Yeah, he didn't need anything. Yeah, but the the Koi Oracle is, uh, is better at the beginning of a turn rather than the end of the turn, just because yeah. you draw into better answers and then you can play it. Well, that was Masan, Masan doesn't have any like spell finishers, so even though he's ahead on life, he's not you know in that great of a spot. It's actually pretty even the way I see it. Yeah, it can get pretty. It can get dangerous really quickly if that uh, Freshian goal gets out of control. 
But Trump doesn't have the most health to play with with his hero power either. So he has to be very cautious. That mark of um, nature, though, will come in handy. Yeah, I think you give us card, you uh, attack face, you drop the other creature, and then you're uh, passing that turn. He's really hoping his opponent doesn't have um, like a fireball top deck or something. Because that'd be perfect damage to just take out this flesh eating ghoul. But Trump's yeah. not out of it just yet. No, I, I still think it's it's pretty even. reasonably even because we know how bad Masson's deck is. <laughs> well, he can go fishing because that's what he needs to do. I'm not even sure what. Oh, okay. Oh. There's, there's the other one. Oh. He gets a second polymorph. Nice. Now, uh, let's see what Trump can do from here. He does have Drew of the Claw. He drew two cards. He drew the Fairy Dragon and Drew of the Claw with the Cold Light Oracle. Yep. Do you charge and try to take out some of the minions and play for the immediate value? Or do you kind of risk it because he just did play... Well, he did play two Polymorphs, so you kind of assume he can't play a third one. Yeah, you, you can't play it in charge, though. You'd probably take too much damage in response. Ooh. Trump going for the max value. Mmm. Man, playing for the win. Well, I guess it's still a really long uphill climb for the win. But Masson, he's got it. He's got a lot. Oh, nope, just kidding. I thought he had the... I thought Rock, Reckless Rocketeer did six, but that's Leroy. That's my bad. Yeah. But uh, Trump is in a losing position right now. He needs to draw through uh, Loot Hoarder. Hey, give me that. What does he have in his deck? He has Iron Bark, right? And he can just pretty much hope he has doesn't he doesn't have Burn yep. and can set up something. That's right. Mm. Oh, that's something. That's yeah, another that turn. is something. See what Trump can draw off this. Maybe he can somehow do stabilize the board. Ah. Well, Innervate allows him to play his Ogre Magi and Hero Power. It's about as good as you can ask. Yeah. I mean, the Fairy Dragon doesn't offer too much anything else really better, other than the fact they can't get, like, frostbolted. Masada's, like, in the zone or something, man, because he's singing, he's dancing, he's tapping his shoes. I'll have whatever he's having. Yeah, he's, he's doing something right now. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe he's multitasking, playing rock band in between turns with Trump. All right, so he gets a gnomish banner. Here. Yeah. yeah, that water elemental is so imposing. That is not good enough. Maybe Trump. if he nope. if he um cycles this. Yeah, it's not going to by itself. He doesn't need to cycle it exactly. He needs to get an iron bar or another taunt. Yeah, if, like if he cycles it, maybe even another wrath. Oh, yeah, another wrath would do it. Yeah. No, not this time, Trump. But he's out of answers. And that's it. Masan, he's going to sing and dance his way to top two. <laughs> and Trump's out of the tournament in third place, just outside of the money. Well, it looks like the final is going to be two mages. Did you see this coming? No, I, I could not anticipate it whatsoever. But you know what? It's not the same two kind of mage decks. One plays with burn and one plays without burn. And one plays, one plays with, with AoE with and cards. one plays without AoE. One plays with good cards and one plays with kind of mediocre cards. But that also kind of shows you, like, Masson's winning without using flame strikes, fireballs, and all those other shenanigans that you're used to on Arena. Could you chalk yeah. it up to luck or you have to say Masson's also playing pretty well? You could make that argument for both, right? Sure. 
All right. Sit on that while we take a break and get ready for the last game, Raynaud versus Masson for the Grand Finals of Lord of the Arena with Crip and Frodan. We'll be right back, guys.